Welcome back to the channel. I wanted to start, or potentially start, kind of a new series today. It won't take very long because I'm already quite a ways into it. Um, but I just thought this might be something interesting that you would enjoy. So let me know down below if you want to see more or kind of what the deal is. I'm just planning to put a couple videos following my pedal board build um, together. So anyway, as you can see, like I said, I'm quite a ways into it. Actually almost done acquiring all the different pieces. Just need to get everything wired and uh, all the cabling run. So um, I'll kind of briefly explain what's going on here and then we will look into just the kind of features and specs of each device that you're seeing here. And then if you're interested, we'll come back and I'll do kind of a video of me wiring everything up and there's a little bit more work to be done on the board itself um, as far as putting the Velcro down to hold the pedals in place and drilling holes for all the cabling to pass through and mounting a few jacks and things like that. So anyway, what this is, if you're not familiar, this is what's commonly called just a pedal board. Reason being is literally this bottom piece of this is a board. You can see there a dovetailed case in a way, but it's not really a case because everything sits on top of it instead of inside of it. It will have a case eventually that holds everything, but what's going on here is these are all different effect pedals that apply a different sound or make different changes to my bass guitar sound or signal. Um, so we'll get into that as we go through what each pedal does, but that's the idea, and what this pedal board idea is, is you put all your pedals in one more compact, easy to use place that you can carry with you, just carry one case essentially versus what do we have here, like 12 different cases, including those. Um, so everything's together, everything's powered with one switch or one outlet, basically. And when it's all said and done, I'll be able to plug in... Whoa, my hand's bigger. Uh, we'll be able to plug in one thing here and out one thing here, basically. Instead of routing everything every time you use it, it'll already be wired together in the way that it needs to be. So that's what the whole thing is. And so what we'll do is go through briefly each pedal that's on here. I'll kind of describe what it is or how I acquired it or came to know what it was. And in future videos, we'll actually play each one or a few of them together so that you can hear what they sound like. But anyway, let's start actually up at the top here. This is one of the most recent additions. I'll zoom in just a little bit on this. This is the Chox Chocolate, and what this is is a, an isolated power supply that you plug in one cable here. This is going to my outlet on the wall, and then it powers each pedal individually. So if you look across there, it gets pretty complicated, but we've got, I think it's 16 different outlets. There's a number of DC outlets, and then a couple AC outlets, and they're all switchable, except for these three. They're all switchable between voltages. One of them is variable on the end. You've got 4 to 15. You can adjust with a dial. There are uh, variable AC outlets, and then they all have their own LED monitoring on each section so that you can kind of see the status. What it'll do is the LED is nice and solid and bright right now. As you load it down, it'll get dim if you're overloading it. And if you've uh, totally exceeded the capacity of that outlet, that LED will go out so that you can have a visual kind of monitor of what's happening. Something else pretty cool that it does is you'll see 
This LED up in the middle of the O there, it's kind of hard to tell on camera, but what that's doing is slowly what they call breathing. Right now it's bright, getting dim, 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 goes out and comes back. What that's doing is pretty neat. It is breathing to show the overall temperature of the whole unit. So what they say in the manual is it'll breathe kind of slowly and maybe what you'd call normally if it's operating correct. If it starts to get too hot, it will breathe faster, just like you would if you had just run a mile or something, you would breathe faster because you're hotter. So that's pretty cool. Um, there's a number of other features on that that we can get into on a future review video, but that's the idea. So then, just for testing purposes, I've got all the cables routed to their corresponding pedal, and you can see all these pedals are lit up because they're powered by that one device. So let's just go right to left real quick on what's here. Up here at the top, this is actually the most recent pedal I acquired. This is a stereo headphone amp. And the reason I'm doing that is in our band, we have in-ear monitors. And so the way we do that is send an output to these headphone amps. And up to this point, we've all used a mono setup. So you're hearing a mono signal that's split and mirrored in your left and right ear. This one is gonna give you your own individual signal for left and right. So it'll send two signals. And I just thought it'd be kinda of neat to experiment with that. So I had to get a different device that allows me to do a left and right stereo mix. And that's just a personal monitor, PMA personal monitor amp. Okay, coming up to the board here. On the far right, this is my Ernie Ball VP Junior volume pedal. And this one has not been modded yet. This is just the original string and potentiometer volume pedal. But I will soon mod that just like I did with this pedal. And we'll get into that more in a future video. But this pedal is also an Ernie Ball VP Junior but it has been modded with the Zeppelin Design Labs um, sort of digital setup. Instead of the spring and string, it's all digital, so there's no string in there. I'll show you that. And this is only gonna be used as my expression pedal for another one over here. I'll explain that in a second. But in order to have that expression capability, there is a way that you can do it with the original by splitting the in and the out, but this one has it built in. So eventually I'll make these the same electronics, they'll just have different functions. This one changes your volume just from quiet to loud. This one makes changes to this zero graph that we'll talk about uh, as an expression pedal. So I can manually manipulate what that pedal is doing with my foot instead of having presets that don't really change. Okay, next is the one pedal that I don't have yet. It's still a sheet of paper. What I'll do, I'll show this on another video, but I'll actually look up the dimensions of each pedal that I'm considering, along with the jack locations and things like that, and cut it out. That way I can lay out the sizes to come up with a layout before I actually have the pedals. So these were all a sheet of paper at one time, and I'll show that, it's kind of cool. But the one that's left is the Broughton Synth Voice Deluxe, and that one, there's only one available right now, and it's priced very high as a result, and I haven't really wanted to make the leap on that yet. But that's what that is. <clears throat> okay, next is uh, just a basic turbo tuner, this is the ST200, kind of the first generation uh, strobe tuner from Sonic Research. And that has just a tuner out from this looper that we'll talk about. So this is not in the signal chain. This is just its own thing. It has a button here for tuning, and it just goes right into the input of that. 
Okay, next is the Iron Ether Zero Graph Deluxe. This is a kind of a combination envelope filter and low pass filter. And I can't really explain that very well without doing an actual demo of it, which we'll do in the future, but that gives you kind of that quacky wah 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 sound. It's hard to explain again, like I said, but that is super cool. I'm really excited to do a demo on that. And as I mentioned before, it has an expression pedal input, which means I can connect this Ernie Ball VP Jr. to the expression input of that, and I can be playing, for example, like wah 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 and open it up like that with the pedal and back and forth and things like that. So it kind of becomes more of a wah at that point, uh, but hard to explain. Right above that is the QSAC tap a whirl that's a tap tempo tremolo, and that kind of gives you the uh, up and down volume sound. That's what a tremolo in general does. So that, again, is hard to explain, but what I'm shooting for there is kind of a, a rotary speaker, or it just adds like a warmth to the sound, having the sound go just very subtly up and down volume-wise. So... It's not a vibrato, which would actually change the pitch, but it changes in that same way uh, to the volume rather than the pitch. So, And that has a number of features that we can get into on a demo of that. Okay, let's go to the bottom row. This is, or Actually, let's do that last. That'll make the most sense last. Top left is the Nordstrand Star Lifter, and that is just a DI preamp. So that changes the level, the overall level of the output of the bass, and gives it just a little bit of a boost. And then the DI feature goes from an unbalanced mono... Let me turn this off, it's distracting. Goes from a one-inch mono... <laughs> one-inch... Quarter-inch mono to XLR. And XLR is what I have to send to our mixer in the group. So that is sort of just a utility pedal, but also has the um, mute feature if I ever need it. It has a couple EQ settings and contours and things like that. It's got a pad or uh, an actual boost, things like that. So it's not making really that big of a change to the sound, but it's uh, making everything operate correctly as far as that goes. Right below that is the Avni FX Smoothie, and that is an optical compressor, and that is another one that's kind of hard to explain, but it's very subtle in the way that I'm using it. It does two things. It balances out the highs and the lows volume-wise, so if you hit a couple real loud notes unintentionally, it will balance those and sort of limit them and if you play some quiet notes, it will boost those just a little bit, is my understanding. But also, it compresses, just like the name implies, it compresses the signal. So that's part of how it's balancing things and limiting things. And it adds sort of a vintage, in my opinion, vintage squashed, uh, fat, round tone to the overall sound. So... If I, like for example, and this will show up in the demo we do on that, but if I just put new strings on my bass, which I did, those end up being very bright and kind of clangy, and what that does is makes them sound fatter and darker, depending on how you have the settings, but that's the general idea of that, is to improve the tone, but not really make a big difference to the tone. So it's a very subtle thing. And we'll get into that on a demo in the future. And almost finally, below that is the Southampton All Things Equal. This is just a volume boost, but it also has a dirty setting that adds a little bit of overdrive. And that's what I'm planning to do is before I get a fuzz, which is probably next on the list, but it's a ways down the list to add kind of some grit to the tone so it makes it sound a little bit grungy, but then also 
The reason I put it on the front row is so I can quickly access the foot switch on that. What that does, oh, I bumped the power. What that does is toggles between what they call the red and the blue layer or knob. And so you can set those where you want. So what I would do is set the blue the same as my output volume. So if my output volume was a six, I would make the blue a six or wherever that ends up being. But then if I need a little bit of a boost in volume for solos or maybe parts of songs that are a little bit louder or things like that, I would turn the red slightly higher than the blue. And so here's maybe the verse and then the chorus that gets loud or something like that. So I just hit that quick. And instead of having to manually adjust my volume somewhere, I would do that. Or I could almost do the same thing by having this maybe here on the volume and then going here. But that is not a preset thing. That could easily be wrong. Um, like, for example, if all the way open was maybe a lead tone, then when I back this down to my regular playing tone I w or volume level, I wouldn't know where that was at. Where with this, I could just look at the blue. It's just below noon, and it's not going to change. So anyway, I have to look at the power jack on that. Okay, and then finally, this bottom row... This is the Road Rage Effect Looper, or Bypass Strip. I, I like to call it a Bypass Strip because now with all the loopers going around, it gets kind of confusing with what that actually does. But what it is, in a nutshell, is it's got all these jacks on the back. It's got your main input and then your main output. So for me, that would be my bass coming in and then it would go out to the DI. Because this is all quarter inch, this has a quarter inch input, but then the XLR output, so I have to have that last in the chain. And then all of these switches, minus these two, we'll talk about those, but these six switches activate each of these six pedals right here on the front row. So. That way I'm not having to go all over the place and try to access these switches in a hurry when I need them during a song or something, and they're not really accessible. I just have these labeled, or I will in the future, and I can just hit this button and turn that on, for example. Or hit this button and that one and turn both of those on. Or, depending on how I cable it, I could have two connected with one button. So I could hit one button and turn those two on at the same time, which is kind of the more practical use of it, having multiple uh, pedals on one button would make a little bit more sense than having them each on their own button. But the reason I'm doing that is to really separate things that I'm not using. So instead of having, what do I have, six or seven pedals hanging on the signal all the time, even when they're not used, I have them removed from the signal. So when these lights are on, that engages whatever pedal is wired in, but then when you shut it off, it takes it completely out of the chain. So anyway, that is what I've got. So I just wanted to give kind of a quick overview and see what you guys thought, what your interest level was, and I'll be coming out with more demos of each pedal individually in the future. So. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and let me know what you want to see down below. And I'll see you guys on the next video.